Big eight foot time we spoke last time from the Shlach Kodesh that we're joining the day to the night as we do in the morning, the night to the day. It's a special eight foot time we brought halacha. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how we're joining the end of the year to the new year and uh, with, we're going into the davening with Lecha Dodi, Kabbalah Shabbos. The new year begins with Shabbos Kodesh. So we're going to mention the concepts of what the parts of the Kadari we say, especially before we skip, we say Likra Shab Zakun Aleika Kihi Mokha Brocha. Mirosh Makedim Nasuka Sov Masa Machshava Tahila. So this Pasik for me was always something that really this pit this song from Alkabets, the holy Alkabets we see here has his initials in the in Lukadodi. Shlomo Alkabets from the Swat. He put into it the essence of this time that we're in now. It's a it's tremendous Ruach HaKodesh, it's Mestama, and an opportunity when we say this every week, especially now, this Shabbos, Rosh Hashanah, we're going to say, we're going out to Shabbos. It's not something, and we're going to mention this at the end from uh, another Sefer, the concept of being proactive, of going out. It's not something which is just, uh, it just comes. We have to actually go, actively go greet the Shabbos Kodesh. Akihi Moko Abrocha. So we mentioned this when I spoke in the shul when the Rav was away. I appreciate the Rav giving me the opportunity to speak again. And also, we mentioned it when I spoke here in the shul, Min Chamarev, the concept that Elo has in it all the Brocha, all the Kayach to bring Panasa and Shefa for the new year, that we should want that Brocha to be for everybody. So when Makavana I have when I say this, Kiha Moko Abrocha, and not just this time of year, but really every Shabbos, because really every Shabbos is connected to the concept of Tishrei. So really, what we're experiencing this Shabbos is the ideal kind of Rosh Hashanah and beginning to Tishrei, because the whole Chodesh Tishrei, Chodesh Tishrei is Shabbos We'll carry on with this uh, in a moment. I just want to read the Pasuk in Tehillim. We're going to be saying, and we say every Yom Chamishi, Tiku B'Chodesh Shofar. There's, there's so much light here, we just have to concentrate it very quickly. The idea that Tikkun V'choy the Shofar, that the, when we blow the Shofar, the renewal, what's the renewal? The renewal we know is Rosh Hashanah, the Kesa Yom Chagenu. And it's the time when everything is, the Kesa is covered up, the moon's covered up, the Yom Chagenu. This is for the day of our festivals. So the Rosh Tevis and Tikkun B'Shoh the Shofar is Rosh Tevis Taf Beis Shin. This is Shabbos. The whole Chodesh is Shabbos thing. So we don't even need to blow the Shofar. We've been learning, thank God, to Rav Shlomo over here, the ideas of why we don't blow the Shofar on Shabbos and the Panemius as well. But in this Pasuk is already a, a very important remez because the Rosh Tevis is showing us that blowing the Shofar is Shabbos. Tikkun B'Shoh the Shofar. There's, some, there's a, a experience of Shabbos by blowing the shofar, and specifically it's a time of the Kesa Yom Chagenu. So now we're going to jump back into the Chadodi, and we'll explain the, the Kesa part in a moment. So, as I said, Elo is a time, the is a time to pray, it's a time we're now at the climax, when the days of Beresh, Masa Beresh, there's a lot of awe going on right now. As we speak, we're already by Yom Shlisha, I believe, and you know, the Chesh, people keep Cheshpan of each day, but Masa Beresh is actually Yom Ravi or Yom Shlishi. Rabbi help us. I'm not sure, but the concept is when we get to Rosh Hashanah itself, it's already Yom Shishi, and then sh- the second day of Rosh Hashanah is already Shabbos. So even in that Cheshbon, the second day is already Shabbos as well. So there's a lot of Shabbos contained in my separations in the, the whole concepts that we're in. So what does it say, Vaita in the Chadori? Merosh Mekerem Lesucha. Merosh. What's the Rosh? Come on, everyone. What's the Rosh? Rosh Hashanah. It's the beginning, yes? Mikedem, what's that? Yom, Yom HaKadosh, Yom Kippur. This, you can call it Yom HaKadosh. Because the idea is, it's such a holy day. It's the holiest day of the year. And the Sukha, and the idea of Sukha, Sukhas, yeah? So we have within the Chadodi, a, a map of the Shabbos we're about to experience. Why? It's a very deep concept. We won't go into it too long, because once again, we need to focus on Rosh Hashanah and the time we're in. But the concept of Tishrei, the concept of Shabbos, the seventh month of Shabbos, the seventh day, is you're experiencing the Rosh. What's the Rosh? Lel Shabbos is the Rosh. And that's Rosh Hashanah. The day it's brought in Svarim is Yom, Yom HaKadosh. 
when you bring out the Torah, it's, it's the second Luchas, you may cobble the Torah in you, you're now clean from, from the avoda of Shabbos, the Shabbos is mochlin the kolavonis, you, you're clean, you're now at a state of Kabbalah Satorah, the real Panimus of Kabbalah Satorah that takes place in Yom HaKadosh and Yom Kippur, that Shabbos day. And then you go in a sukkah, now you're by the third mill, Shalasudas. And that's the concept that Tishrei is a map of Shabbos. It's a Shabbos spread out. It's opened up. So we get to experience the whole Chodesh Shvi, what Shabbos is, on a longer form, in a bigger way, in a bigger Zman. And it's, it should excite us a week, if, as much as we enjoy uh, Shabbos in Shirat David. Imagine a whole Chodesh of Shabbos in Shirat David. Yeah? So comes the climax, and for me it'll be my first. Sof Masav and Machshav Tachila. What's the Sof Masa Machshav Tachila? Anyone going to guess? Where would that be in Chodesh Tishrei? This is my own Chodesh, so you can disagree or agree. Shana Rabba, Simchas Torah, yeah. And even if you want to say, there's even Swam that talk about that even Shabbos Bereshis also has in it, obviously, the Rashis, but it has it in, in it the concept of the Rabba, the Rabbin of the Chodesh. It's like the spitz of Chodesh Tishrei that you can talk about. It's the Mach... The Sof Master Machshav, the first thought. What was the Hashem's first thought? The first thought of Hashem was what? To create, to Master Bereshit, to create Am Yisrael, to create the world, to have a Bria. That was the first thought. Master uh, Chesed, to, to bring down Neshamas and create this, this opportunity for us to live and have a mission and to do with God's will. So this, this is what's happening on Chodesh Tishrei, that the climax of Shabbos, the climax of the month is Sof Master the, the end is the Maaseh, because it all comes back to the original thought. The original thought, the original Rotson. We spoke about last time, we spoke the concept of Rotson and Sinor. And, and the, these ideas are very deep, but the concept is that we are entering a time where we're now going to be in Shabbos for a whole Chodesh. That's, that's, that's how we're explaining this. As we said, even the beginning of the Chodesh has a remez when we're blowing the shofar. Um, Tikka B'chodesh, uh, B'chodesh Shofar is Rosh Hashem Shabbos but the second part B'kesi Yom Chagenu so then we're going to turn to I believe the Baal Shem Tov first we're going to explain something really really important in the Baal Shem Tov he explains the idea of Anochi Asta the idea of the last week's part, Sh- Shabbos I wasn't here I was in London so I was experiencing a little bit of the Hasta Asta you know the double covering over there in Chutzlar it's mm-hmm. it's, it's <laughs> it's intense, but Baruch Hashem, I feel very honored that I was able to do good shlichas there, connect to a lot of, lot of good neshamas, and we'll mention one of them soon, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Klein, we're going to quote from his sefer, hopefully if we have time, but the idea, how long do we have by the way, anyone keeping time? Oh, amazing, so we have the idea of the, the haste haste, this double covering, anochi, the anochi, the Baruch Hashem anochi is, that's like the, the panemius is within even the covering, and the biggest gilui comes at a time when it's the biggest has to win. Who says this? So, thank God, my favorite safer in, in the world right now is Rav Label Eger. Yeah? Well, I have this to have been connected to a lot of Siddiquim who are very Mukusha to, to the light of Rav Label Eger, either through Rav Sodok or his Chavrusa, or the, now we have this in which, for me, this year has been a Schuss of learning Shabbos, Meshalach, his Rebbe, and also the derech of, you know, the chesidus that he came from originally through the Kotzka and all the way back to Yiddish Kodesh and back to the, that derech and also the Choyze. So we're going to hear just one little idea from the Reb Leibu Eger. Hayom Azeh, what is Rosh Hashanah Hayom Azeh? Nikra Bekesa Shu Inyan His Kasas. This is the idea of the covering up. But Emes Biyom Azeh, He Ika His Galash Yesh Ma'ayin, Bereish Sabriya. Ki Zos He Ika His Galash Shabo Ayide HaElem for his kasas. So the, this is a Gavaldic Torah, very small, and uh, he's basing it off the Tehillim. We just quoted the idea of Bekesa and Tehillim Pe'alef in uh, Psalm 81. The idea of this covering of the moon, the covering, as we said already, is connected to the idea of Hastas, the Ponai, the idea that Shem's hiding himself, but there's, at that time is really the tremendous Gilui. This is really important to know for our generation, where there's the biggest cover up ever in history like politically, economically, everything's covered up. People's hearts are covered up. I, I was talking to a year in London, he, he works for Aish, and uh, he, was, he was came around to, to just, you know, be so on, we get together. For some reason, he thinks I have something worthwhile to say to him. So I had the schus to mention this concept to him that the Rabbonim that I had told me that when you work with Yidin, 
especially when, you know, I was a midnight rabbi, I was out on the streets and that meant out in Ben Yehuda or, or nightclubs or anywhere I went. And back in London at this party, wherever it was, I said to him that I focus on the neshama. That's what the Rabbonim told me to do. Focus on the neshama. Don't focus on the, the money they have or the, whatever your agenda is. Focus on one thing, the neshama. And that would be the shmir. That would be the protection when you're helping Yidin in a far off place or even you know, whoever it is you're helping. You, you have to focus on the neshama. That was what Rav Dayan El, uh, Rav Dayan Vida told me. He's a Dayan in Bells. There's Rav Samet, Yehuda Samet. He does, you know, big mashkir and also a hidden person, but a very special person. The idea of the gilui that comes out from these places where there's cover-up is, is not normal. The amount of Torah and chizuk that I've got when I've been in those most covered-up places is bringing true here. Because where Hashem hides himself, this is where you have the opportunity to really grow, to have Bechira. We're going to talk about that in a minute again from Rabbi Yaakov. But first, let's get back to the Baal Shem Tov. He said a very important avoda for all of us, being the Rosh Hashanah, the Yom of Bekesa Yom Chagenu, this day of covering up. What is there also an opportunity to do on this special day? Not just to have big gilui and big revelations of, of deep machshava, as we mentioned in the Shia this morning, with Rav Shlomo, that there's 48 hours, it's Yom Arich Dami, it's a day of Mayach, a day of mind, Rosh, it's the head of the year. So he says here, machshava zaras. What do we do that? So the, the Baal Shem Tov says the idea, when we have not good thoughts, there's a certain pasul uh, in the tefillah, and it causes it to go down from its holy place into a place that's pasu. In this pala of Rosh Hashanah b'Kavana, mala koa tefillah shel kol Hashanah, shachris l'shachris mincha l'mincha. So there's a special time, and it, this concept is alive right now. So you might remember by Rabbi Sumai Zilberberg. I always felt there was like an eight shots on, like it was the zman. Every every minute was a zman, you know, like, and that's true, really, on, on panemius level, but. The Rav Simai always just say, leading up the whole week, this is the last, you know, mincha of chaf zayin, of, of, you know, tafshin pay, whatever it was, or tafshin ayin, or samech, whenever I was by him. This is the last shachwis, the last... This. Now comes Rosh Hashanah, it's saying the Baal Shem Tov. This is not just Siddiquim, like generally, this is the Baal Shem Tov himself, saying that there's, all the tefillahs have ability to go up. And this is something which, throughout the whole of Tishrei, there's a certain aliyah, just like we know about Shabbos itself, there's aliyah lomas, and there's an idea that that things go up, so to the Chodesh Tishrei, all the tefillahs have a special power. And to think about that, that we're now elevating all the prayers we've done this whole year. When we were in a place, a difficult place, doubling in a quick mincha, I was like, you know, I was in London, I had to get somewhere, I had done Marev by myself at home because I got back so late from the whatever. So that suddenly that tefillah gets, not only was it in a place of hastas, the Ponai, but now we have the ability to elevate it all the way up at Rosh Hashanah and also it says by the Hakafas of Simchas Torah. There's all different Eitzvot songs throughout Sukkot as well, Hashanah Rabbah they say. And you know, it's, it's amazing the opportunities of t- what we can do in this time without even having to be so, such big Siddiquim. We're just knowing that having a comfort that there's special Eitzvot song to elevate all the tefillahs of the year. So that's the Baal Shem Tov. Okay, now that we're just going to say just one very quick advice that I always remember this time of year. The gift is from Rabbi Nachman, you know, Rosh Hashanah. I, I, don't, I can't believe I'm actually not on my way to Uman right now. And it must be Hashem really wants me here. Because previous years, it was like the easiest thing in the world for me to get to Uman. People like made me go and had everything taken care of this year. I'm standing here in, in Eretz HaKodesh and this is where Hashem wants me. And we're, we're going to have to say something from Rabbi Nachman such a day. And I remember by Siddiquim, when people would ask them, why aren't you by Uman? Why aren't you by Uman Rosh Hashanah? And he would answer them, I have a Lukuti Maran. I put it next to my Shtenda on Rosh Hashanah. He has a Kedushas Levi. And I'm with the Siddiquim. That's, 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 that was their answer back. Uh, Rav Simai Zilberg, for example, if you checked his Shtenda on Rosh Hashanah, which I did, it had a Kedushas Levi and, uh, and a Lukuti Maran. That, that's ex- excluding all the other pile of swarm he had there as well, like the Ketosa Choshen, and he wasn't just uh, Lani Kassidus, obviously. He was a big person. But the point, that come back to here, Ki Erech Haim, Hu Tali Bechinus Amunah. So this whole Torah, Kuf Nun Hei, teaches us something really important. All of us are now saying Yudas Arachman, correct? Yeah, well, hopefully we're saying Slichos. And as we build, go through this time, we're going to say it more and more. Until Yom Kippur, Yom HaKodesh, we're going to say it so much, it's going to bring us to the highest of highs by Na'ilah. 
the amount of times I say Yudzei Rachim again and again, this idea of Rikas Apayim is a very important concept. He, Rabbi Nachman says it's, it's one, it's Deir Vezeh, it's the same concept as Amuna and Emes. This is this Torah, Kufn and Hay, by Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is the concept of Rikas Apayim, Emes, Amuna, these three beautiful, con- like real concepts that we all need to live with and, and apply. So we're not saying it's a Rachman, we're not just saying Arichas Apayim, Erech Apayim, because of it's, you know, for Hashem. Obviously, the whole concept of tefillah is to change ourselves, to become more godly, more like Hashem, more patient, more Arichas Apayim. So this is a time where suddenly, Erev Yom Tov, Tishrei, we feel this pressure to like, not only daven a lot and pray a lot, so we hear these ideas from the Baal Shem Tov, we now have to build the kalim, the vessel, for those prayers, and make sure that, for example, Shalom Bayas, Hinochbonim, all the things that we care about should, should have a place and have a time that flow in a healthy way. And for me, this concept of Rikas Apayim is, is, is the aid, is the advice. Because now, I'm going to be patient. And what one Rav said to me, Moshe, um, and his last name, he was a very important person to me. For some reason, I can't remember why I don't. Anyway, he'll, it'll be a Swiss for him. And I, by the way, it's reminded me that I'm dedicating this class to um, Yitzel Bas Ezreal. Uh, that's how she, she reps a nice that. If anyone had Kesha with her, she was Reb Ezreal Tauber's daughter and with Neustadt's uh, wife, and also one of the biggest Chasidus, Chasidot, to have you say, of the Tom the Rebbe, my Rebbe. And she has a shlichus in the whole world, if anyone's heard of her, I don't know if you have, but she helped thousands and thousands of people and you know, went in the way of her father, Rev. Israel Tauber, who's also a very famous person from the Holocaust and did amazing things for me personally and for Amisra. So we're having her in mind, she just passed away suddenly. But the idea of Rikas Apayim, this is the key point. Have patience with yourself, all of you, including myself. The best advice I got was to have patience with myself. Because if we have patience with ourselves, we're vada have patience for other people. That means patience in our God is Hashem, patience in our Panasa, patience. I went to see my Rebbe, talking about my Rebbe, the Tom the Rebbe. We went to Kabbalah's Kahal, and my Rebbe is a relative of Rebbe David over there. Is that right? From the same Mishpacha, Twersky, correct? Your Mishpacha? Yeah. So, what did the Rebbe say when we went to Kabbalah's Kahal? We walked in, he's giving us honey. And uh, the simcha sachayim and the love, we feel the love, he's calling out all our names. And uh, by the way, I'm very nervous to speak in front of Roshama, I don't know why, but I am feeling that. It was easier when he wasn't here. <laughs> but he was giving out honey. I remember at one time I started speaking in front of my Rebbe at the Bar Mitzvah, and Baruch Hashem, he left. I was so relieved. Because they asked me to speak at that moment, and he thanked God. And it, I don't think it was because of me he left, I think he just is a busy Rebbe and didn't have time. But anyway, to end off this, this point, that the Rebbe said to me, and to my family, Mamish, patience. He said, you, if you have, in the past he spoke more about simcha, other things, but he said to me, just have patience with the process. He said to my family, you will be matzliach in everything, but just be patient with the process. Get rid of the lachas, the, the pressure. And that was like a game changer. Like I had a lot of, Lachas, say all this Torah right now, patience. These are deep concepts. Let's let, let, let them go inside, as there's all these breathing techniques of Shlomo coming to me one time and just breathe. It's true, we have to just go with the flow, it's, it's, it will work out. And as we said, even in the biggest cover-up is the greatest revelation, that's what we just learned before. Now to end off, I gave a Gavaldic share today in my own home. Uh, nothing was working, so I really had to apply this patience idea. But it worked out myself. And the biggest chizuk chiz was, is I stayed by Rabbi Yaakov Klein for Shabbos, and I had suitors by another Choshev Rav, and, and then I was with all my family the other way, and phones in my face on Shabbos, and you know, barbecues being made, and all kinds of other chilo Shabbos that I had to be around, and people who, famous people, you know, millionaires, this and that, really interesting Shabbos from Rabbi Yaakov and another Rav to this, to that world, it was amazing how Hashem could put you in one place, in one Shabbos and then another place. I'm sure Rosh Hashanah can relate with all his travels. But the idea of being by Rabbi Yaakov, he gave me the Sefer. And he was so mechazic hearing about Shir David, what's going on here, the little, you know, that I could give over in my small way, explain a little bit the Avodah and the, the Chizik and the fact that I really 
Because one of the issues I had when I'd spoken to him back in the day is I've never found a kilo in Eretz Yisrael. Even having a Rebbe doesn't mean I've found a kilo. And this is a kilo, Bermes. Like, thank Hashem. It's something to go into Rosh Hashanah to thank Hashem that, <laughs> I mean, maybe you're used to it already, but for me, years, 20, I've been here 25 years or more in Eretz Kodesh, and to finally fill a place I can feel somewhat cool my kihila. This is a community, a real community. And it's only at the beginning, it seems like. So, Bo Hashem, Cha So, he, he, he was very impressed. Anyway, he gave me the Sefer, and uh, to just end off, he, the concept of being proactive. That was what was in my mind right now. I'm teaching at B'nai Akiva right now, and they asked me to talk about intimacy. So, I didn't want it to just be only about intimacy. I, I needed like a formula that I could ground it into something that they could take with them, values that go beyond intimacy. The, the program wants me to talk about that, but I'm making sure that they're going to come away with certain key points. So the first point I discuss, discussed with them about intimacy, about getting into the whole class, was being proactive. Where did I get the concept of being proactive? I read a book a long time ago, I recommend it this, to everyone and anyone, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I don't know if anyone's ever read it. But it's by a non-Jew, Stephen Covey, and it's Gavaldic. I know we're in a base midrash, but he has already Haskamas from Rav Olawik and Chabadniks, and everyone around and around has read it and, and seen that it's, it's like a Torah de Kabuk written by a Goy. Yeah? It can happen. Yeah? He just had Sata de and tuned into the concepts, universal truths of this world, and we need those kind of truths more than ever. So what I did is I took his seven habits and expanded it to the ten habits, because I wanted it to fit the sphere of Selyonim, I wanted to fit our, our world. Added on an extra few. But the first one is being proactive. Being proactive. What is being proactive? So the, straight away, I open up, the first time I've opened up his book, and look inside other than when I look to acknowledgements towards Roshlom and other Chosha people, I open it up, and inside, straight away, the first thing I see is all about Victor Frankl, Dr. Victor Frankl, I call him Rav, Dr. Victor Frankl, about being proactive. Yeah, the idea of logotherapy, and the concepts of choosing. The concept he brings with Cook, he brings Rabbi Nachman, what's the name of He brings Gavaldik and Siddiquim, and he brings Viktor Frankl. This is Rabbi Yaakov Klein, and it's in his book on the, uh, the whole concept of the lost princess. Everyone should know it by now if you're in Shirat David and been here a while. So the idea of the story of the lost princess, but the, the main point of being proactive that he focused on in this part of the book, it was like, wow, such a revelation. You know, I've go to London, come back with a book, and it's exa- I really didn't know what to talk about today in my weekly class. I try my myself responsible to say something once a week somewhere. If it's not in front of you, Hodge of the people, then at least I'll do it online, and maybe a few hundred people will hear it at some point or another because it's on Spotify, this place, that. But eventually it gets somewhere, as Rosh Hashanah testifies. Once you put it on the major platforms, it gets places, it travels, and you'd be surprised. And that's why I recommend all of you in your own way should have your own sort of like place to give over. It's very important, especially nowadays. We have responsibility. In my opinion, I spoke about this in, in when I spoke at the JLE in London. The idea that everyone in there not, don't just want the, the Anhala and the Robonim to make this an amazing place like the JLE was for me when I first did Tshuva over there in London. I said to them, all of you guys right now realize you have, all have your own shlichus, your own mission, and all of you can give over. All of you can make an improvement here. In the, in the infrastructure in whatever way and contribute. And that's the idea, once again, of being proactive. We have that choice. We have that choice to not react to a place, but to be proactive, to be positively involved and engaged. How can we help this place? And this concept of choice, Rabbi Nachman says very deep. He says that we never lose it. We're always Baal Bahira. And I will end off with this point, and I think this will be the conclusion of the whole shir. That since we're in the generation, Baruch Hashem, with the biggest cover-up ever in history, the biggest cover-up of Mishamas, the soul so covered up with thick layers of, without getting into what, you know, all these painful realities that I'm sure the Rav hears about there after and all of you see on the news and this and that, or even, God forbid, go through it yourself in your own way. The idea that we are the generation of Baal Bahira. This is another Chiddush I'm saying, and it connects into the beginning of the class. Sof Ma'asim Machshav we have the power to choose. We have the, this is Rosh Hashanah, we can choose. Choose what our years about. It's not just Hashem is, is, is gozer on us, like this scary thing. This is a real relationship with God, and He wants us to choose. We have to choose. So the idea is, in our door, we've n- there never has been a reality. And this, this is Chiddush, but I think it's Emes. We've had the ability to choose more than ever. 
All of us, right, every second right now, can choose what we look at. I, I have an assignment with the phones. I'm sure each of you have your tests. Like, do I focus on the Rav Shia or do I look at my phone? Do I focus on davening or do I look at my phone? That's for example. And forget about, once you're on the phone, now it's, you know, depending on who you are, all the, all the Nisyonists that come with that. And the Bechira, the point of Bechira, there never was such a point of Bechira ever in history of what you could choose to do with it. You could choose to elevate the world. You could choose to go off into your own self-indulgence, whatever. And this is a choice that never was. I remember speaking to Rabbanim from the old world. Like they wouldn't see uh, an Nisoyen maybe once a month, maybe once a year. Because the streets were empty. It was, it was a different world. The, the, the fact we're all so exposed to so much every moment and we have choice on the highest levels. So this makes us one ballot tshuva on a certain level, all of us, because we have to constantly do tshuva on the tshuva again and again and all the choices we're doing and it's a very intense reality to live in. But at the same time, it shows how precious we are to Hashem, that we're constantly showing our love to Hashem more than ever in all the generations that we're choosing Him again and again and again, like no other generation. And on that note, we should all be blessed. The fact that we are such a generation that are choosing Hashem, such a place, Shirat David, with such love, everyone should be blessed. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it.